Forecasting weather gets very uncertain. Like you don't even know what is going to happen tomorrow, but we are trying to figure out what is going to happen in the next 40 years, 50 years, maybe even 80 years. So we are trying to find a way to most accurately predict and also manage different risks using different approaches like machine learning, statistical modeling, and also physics modeling. Welcome to my office. Hi, I'm Yuki Mira. I'm an assistant professor at Center for Urban Science and Progress and also Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering. I've been working on pretty extended area of risk analysis, focusing on natural hazards, uh, climate-related hazards, identifying the risk itself, and then also measuring size or the damage or number of people are going to be impacted. I develop a framework to optimize solutions that works for different types of stakeholders, institutions, and communities. To tackle this complicated issue, I've been integrating mechanical, civil, and environmental engineering, and also data science with stakeholders' engagement and inputs. It's not only theoretical, but it can be actually used in uh, real practice and planning. I work on different projects under three different umbrellas, uh, identification, measurement, and also management. Each one of them are very different, but in general, I use a lot of generative AI tools on probabilistic modeling, statistical modeling, fluid dynamics, and also even financial modeling. And among machine learning topic, I use those generative AI, and then also visual language model, uh, coupling with remote sensing to identify different types of data set or exposure data. So the identification one, currently we are developing global building roof top material data set. So different hazards impact different types of building very differently. So we are using satellite imagery and also visual language model to identify global buildings material through the satellite image. Another one that's very exciting is a 3D map of flooding that you can move around in different locations. Essentially, it shows you the depth of flood and then also velocity of flooding and vulnerability of different types of floods. Essentially, that gives you some indicator if you can be standing there safely or if you can drive during that time or your children will be okay or not. So people who have no technical knowledge on flooding or flood models can also access to see uh, what kind of potential flooding could happen in their regions and then also identify what they could do. And we also included seawalls and protective measures in the scenario and then this interactive map so that you can try out to see if this seawalls could work and give you some benefit in your area. FloodNet team, we work together. I simulate a lot of flooding. They are recording the flooding, so we can validate. And then also I can tell them if we have some sensors in this region that will benefit most of people to identify flood risk or even identify some mitigation measures. So I'm originally from Japan, where I have a lot of different types of natural hazards. So it has been pretty natural to me to be curious about those risks. After moving to New York, my first research topic was about how subway is going to be flooded, how can we protect this in an efficient way. And it was really fascinating for me. So that's where I started working on these risk analysis topics. After my PhD in Colombia, I have been working on New York City stuff, and then I moved to financial sector and then continued working on climate and risk analysis area. And that was really exciting for me. And I am now an advisor for New York City as a panelist on New York City panel on climate change. I worked with multiple departments of MTA. I presented some of pilot works with them. I've been very happy and then lucky to be part of a lot of initiatives with New York City. And throughout the past 10 years, uh, I've been working with New York City very much. It's been great and I would love to extend more so that they can also identify those protective strategy in an efficient way. We are currently working on actually establishing standards for those decision making. But on top of that, I 
really strongly believe that it's really important to scale these frameworks and tools as well. Uh, New York City has been really lucky to have a lot of information, a lot of data available to researchers and communities, but also it would be great to extend that information and tools, frameworks to other locations impacted by those climate-related hazards. I'm also an affiliate with Stern Business School. Uh, and I'm part of a volatility and risk institute there. We care a lot about this climate aspects as well. Climate-related hazards do impact a lot of financial sectors. For example, once hurricane hits the area, then power system might go down. And what is going to happen afterwards is different sectors will be impacted. So that's what we are also trying to identify using network models. And then also management side, I'm working on building a framework that gives you optimal solution based on your objectives and based on your constraints. So for example, if you wanted to do something in Lower Manhattan, for example, then there are so many options you could do. Maybe you can retrofit like one building or you can seal like some of the ventilations on the ground or you can build some massive sea walls on the coastline. We are trying to help to make those right answers, essentially. And how do we do that is checking every single building's damage from every possible hurricanes and flooding. Here we run pilot analysis, and that one we run for 80 years. So beyond 2100, we run every single possible hurricanes and then see how buildings, how infrastructure, how subway system, and even business sectors, and financially, how they are all impacted. And then once we identify that, we figure out what kind of protective measures actually give us some benefits. So we've been working on macro level to different sectors level impacts from different types of hazards. It's really exciting to combine climate science, engineering, and also financial modeling as well.